central focus, one mantra that we want to resonate on the hearts and minds of believers and followers of God wherever we can reach them. And that notion is don't stop praying. God is blessing us in this season to get closer to him through the avenue of prayer. And we're learning even right now through the narrative of the life of Jacob that we've got reasons, blessings that come out of wrestling with God through prayer. We've been in Genesis 32. I want to invite your attention there now in Genesis 32. And we've been looking at the, the storyline of Jacob and watching our brother as he goes through these seasons of his life where he's wrestling with God. That entire chapter, although we're going to see him actually wrestling with God in the theophany, we're seeing how these episodes, his moments of fear, the struggles in his life are all occasions where he's wrestling with God. And we've put this premise out that you're wrestling with God in the seasons and situations of life are the occasions where you are most vulnerable, most intimate, and most dependent on the creator. Remember that God will allow for life to happen in such a way where the creature returns to the creator for counsel on how to navigate this nuisance of life that we call the human condition. We all no matter where you are or what level of faith you think that you're on, you will have a Jacob-like moment where you need God like never before. It may come where you're in the question of how you navigate to the next season. It may come where you are fearful of someone else and what they might do to you. And where we find Jacob right now is in a place where he is in great trepidation as a result of Jacob. I'm sorry, as a result of Esau. We've seen from the text two things that we've observed from this narrative. We've noticed the context of fear. That was our first installment. We noticed the connection 
with the covenant keeping God in his language of prayer. And now I want to bring your attention to the consideration of the promises that come from God. Let's read the text again, and then we'll jump right in. At verse number six of Genesis 32, the Bible says, the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau. And furthermore, he is coming to meet you with 400 men, uh, I'm sorry, and 400 men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. And he said, if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the company which is left will escape. Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham. And God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, return to your country and to your relatives and I will prosper you. I am unworthy of all the loving kindness and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant. For with my staff only I crossed this Jordan and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he will come and attack me and the mothers with the children. For you said, I will surely prosper you and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be numbered. In this text, we notice again in the context of fear where Jacob is openly stating what's going on with him in his heart. He appeals to the covenant keeping God. He makes the statement, oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac and my God as well. He grabs a hold of the covenant keeping God in his descendancy that reaches all the way to him. And now at verse number 12, you find Jacob appealing to the consideration of the promise of our God. Watch what he says, verse 12. We're going to camp out right here in this text. He said, for you said, I will surely prosper you and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be numbered. Jacob teaches us another reason why we should never stop praying. Don't stop praying because when you pray, you are grabbing a hold of the promises that God gives you and I and, and, and brings them into the reality of who we are. Jacob already established that the reason why I'm coming to you, God, is because I am afraid. And in this moment of crisis, Jacob's faith was shaken. Can I share something with you? Isn't it interesting how we can allow the finite to become stronger than the infinite when it presents us with a temporary challenge? You got to remember that Jacob had a promise from the eternal God. Note that that promise that he got from God, he already saw the proof that God is one who will do what he said he will do. Jacob now has a problem that's created a faith quake in his life. And that problem is Esau. Esau, his brother whom he wronged. Esau, his brother whom he shamed. And now Esau is on the fringes, on the horizon, keeping Jacob nervous and worried about what he's going to do. Notice Jacob said, he's going to come and attack me. He's going to attack the mothers and the children. Lord, I'm afraid this problem is causing me to have nervous tendencies to allow my faith to be shaken. Now, can I share something else? In those moments where even though you know the promises of God and you've seen the proof of God doing what he said he would do, there are certain problems that will cause your perspective to be moved out of whack. Our perspectives can be rattled when we let the noise and people and issues and stressors and situations and struggles and feelings or fleeting moments become more significant than the promises that come from God. And Jacob reminds us of some stuff. When we are in those moments, don't stop praying, whatever the reason might be, don't stop praying because that's a time for you to make the right kind of request. Verse number 12, Jacob turns the entire thing back over. He knows what's going on in his heart. He knows what's going on in his spirit. He knows what's going on in his mind. But I love how Jacob pivots and says, wait a minute, you said God. He puts everything back on God. God, I'm just bringing this to
to you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not begging. I'm not telling you I'm tapping out. I'm not telling you I'm giving up. All I'm asking God is that you do what you said you'll do. Be who you said that you are. Do the thing that you do so well. Look at the text at verse number 12. He said, I, God, you said I will surely prosper you. You said I will surely make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be numbered. Jacob grabs a hold of the emphasis of what God said. You said you'll prosper me. You said you'll make me. I love it because watch what Jacob is really doing. He's saying, God, look at here. You said you were going to bless me. Now, I've seen you do some blessings, so I'm sure about what you're going to do. Y'all missed it. In the middle of this fearful moment, Jacob's request was a request that girded him in such a way where it reestablished the reason why he ain't tripping. I'm sorry. The reason why he's not tapping out. He's not giving up. He's not letting go of his faith. He's not backing out. He's not giving up on who God is. Can I share something with you? In a season right now where everything's going on in your life that's causing other folk to give up and pull out on who God is and I ain't going to church and I don't believe this and I don't love that and I don't know why God letting this happen so on and so forth. Wrong posture. The right posture when you are afraid when you've got your Esau like stuff is to remember God you said you was going to do some stuff. You said you were going to prosper me. You said you was going to bless me. So I, I, I'm calling on you based on what you said. I'm calling on you based on what I've seen. And as a result of what you said and a result of what I've seen, I am sure that I'm going to get what you promised me. In other words, I'm having a fearful moment, but you're still my God. Oh, I'm having a moment that's causing me to be afraid, but you are still my God. So notice in the reason Jacob had his fear, Esau, Jacob gives a request to God. God, I'm asking you to do what you said you'll do. Number three, that shows us that Jacob had a powerful resolve in who our God is. Watch, watch, watch. Come here. Jacob was able in bringing in this statement of what God has done. He goes back through the seed line promise that began with Abraham. Abraham, come out. I'm going to bless you and make you numerous. The promised baton was passed to Isaac. Isaac, I'm going to bless you and make you numerous. Isaac took the baton, passed it to Jacob. Jacob said, stick, I'm going to make you numerous. Now watch, that baton had gone through. Jacob was able to look back and say, I saw what you did with my, my granddaddy. I saw what you did with my daddy. I've seen you bless me get through my stuff with Laban, and now I'm fine finally able to move on and be who I said I would be, uh, who, you said, who you said I would be. So my resolve is that when I look back over the canopy of God's promises, God's vows, it ought to create, hear me child of God, it ought to create courage and immovable spirit in the face of your Esau-like moments, no matter what they may be, no matter who they may be, no matter when they may be, no matter where they may be, you and I or to have a resolve that's based on what God, number four, has revealed to us. Let me let me share something with you. The reason why we cannot stop praying, don't stop praying, because God has revealed over and over again that he is a God who will bless you. Say it out loud in your own spirit. God says he will bless you. He'll say it over and over again. And the word of God reveals that God takes the position and he says to us in a present an active sense, in a perfect sort of tense. I will bless you throughout the word of God. You can hear him talking over and over again that I will bless you. He told Jacob, I will prosper you. I will make you. He told us that he will do some things as well. So we should never stop praying. Don't stop praying because God has revealed in his word the rich character of him being God enough for whatever you go through. Notice in the text, God says, I will strengthen you and hold you up. Isaiah 41 verse number 10. I will go before you and be with you. Deuteronomy 31 verse number 8. I will keep you at perfect peace. Isaiah 26 verse number 3. I will 
give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28. I will fight for you. Exodus 14 verse 14. I will help you. Isaiah 41 verse number 13. I will give you wisdom to walk this thing out. John, James chapter 1 verse number 5. I will provide for you what you need. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. I will save you. Psalm 18. I will answer your prayers. Isaiah 65 verse 24. God over and over again reminds us that I our resolve comes out of the revealed word of God that promises us God hadn't given up. He's still God enough with whatever we go through. So our resolve is that I'm not going to stop praying. Don't stop praying because God will. He'll do whatever I need him to be. He'll be my strength. He'll, be, he'll go ahead of me. He'll fight for me. He'll give me rest. He'll help me. He'll save me. He'll give me wisdom. He'll provide for me. He'll answer my prayers. He'll keep me at perfect peace. I ain't got to trip out. I ain't got to worry. God, I'm calling on you to do what you said you will do. And he will. So don't stop praying. Because we practice the means of requesting the power and promises of God who, who, who gives us the ability to have that kind of resolve from the revealed word of God. Let me share something with you as we prepare to pray. Don't stop praying, but face your Esau. Let me challenge you. Face your Esau. How, Thomas? By focusing on God's promises. And when you focus on God's promises, he will fix your heart to overcome all matters of fear because God will face your trouble with you and for you. Let's talk to him right now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being the one that we can run to, being the one who is greater than any opposition that we face. Thank you, Father, for being our strength, for being our peace, for being our provider, for being our caretaker, for granting us the ability to be at perfect peace despite what we go through. Lord, we ask that you rise up and bless and strengthen and girdle our hearts and our Esau-like moments so that we can stand like Jacob and call on what you said you will do and have the resolve that we've seen you do it, we've seen you work in time past. We heard what you said. And so, Lord God, help us to stay our ground and trust you in the process of going through whatever season that we're in. Lord, we call on you right now because we need you. We ask, oh God, to rise up in our world, heal, strengthen, and renew it. Help us, Father, to live this moment right now just for you. We ask, oh God, that you bless and strengthen those that need you. We pray that you help us in wrestling with you through our time of prayer and through our time of distress, that you Give us the peace, the inner tranquility that we need to rise up and face our struggles and face each moment in the same spirit that men of old and women of old have done in time past. God, we love you. Thank you for your word that makes this kind of resolve possible. Thank you for the, the ability that we see through scripture to have our minds anchored and centered on you. We ask that you go with us now. We pray, Lord God, that you give us the power to face this next moment, this next season, this next step, and help us to keep our hands interlocked with you. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We ask, oh God, that you raise us up even right now. Bless us, Father, to walk in power as we face these next fearful stages of our life. God, strengthen our world. Bless us to call on you and get glory in everything, even right now. We ask all this in Jesus' name as we together say amen and amen. Listen, don't stop praying. Jacob is teaching us that in our times of struggle, even whatever the reason might be, we know that we can make a request to our God and call on him to be the God he said he would be in our resolve is that we can trust the revealed will and word of God for him to be who he said he will be. He will strengthen. He will go before. He will keep you. He will give you rest. He will fight for you. He will help you. He will give you wisdom. He will provide for you. He will save you. He will answer your prayers. So don't stop praying. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please. Pray for me. Let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you the way. And God keep you.